Hi there. Some students have to focus on monopoly pair as a cause of market failure for the AS Micro course. Uh, one of the aspects they're asked to consider is to ev evaluate the costs and benefits of monopoly pair. Not using sophisticated cost and revenue curves, but just really thinking about the basic economics. And that's what I'll try and do in this revision video for you. Here's an example of a market where there is significant market power. Wrigley's is a dominant firm in the United States chewing gum market. It has nearly 60% of the market in 2015, more than twice the market share of the next nearest competitor, which itself would come under the title Working Monopoly. So this is a duopoly with two firms accounting for more than 80% of the market. Uh, the others fighting for the, for the lower places, including Hershey. Wrigley's is clearly a business with significant significant monopoly power. The key issue, as with this business and others, is what happens. What are the economic case for and against monopoly? So a key question to ask in AS Micro is, does monopoly power lead to market failure? Now, in the AS Micro, you're not expected to use sophisticated cost and revenue curves. That comes in in year two. But it's a really, really good use of simple supply and demand to think about how a monopoly might lead to a loss of economic efficiency. So in our diagram on the left-hand side here, the supply and demand equates at price P1 and Q1. That's, if you like, the competitive equilibrium price. The monopoly, of course, doesn't necessarily have to charge that price. They could, in theory, uh, charge a higher price, well, a much higher price, P2, and restrict output up to the demand curve. Uh, output could restrict to Q2. Now, if you think about it, think about the areas here, that, that higher price, P2, particularly if demand is inelastic, is going to cause an increase in the total revenue for the monopoly and assuming their cost conditions are pretty similar it's clearly going to mean they can make a higher profit so p2 would be well above the competitive price p1 the main case against monopoly therefore is that firms can use their market power to make higher profits at the expense of the consumer and that leads to a loss of allocative efficiency effectively a loss of consumer surplus Monopolists will try and extract a price from consumers above the marginal cost of the resources used in making the product. And the result of that, if you want to take the analysis a bit further, is that if you have monopoly prices which are much higher than under competition, then consumer needs and wants are not being fully satisfied because price is above where it would normally be and therefore the product is under-consumed. That is a cause of market failure. Now, the key thing really is to bring in some concepts into your analysis. So it's a really good idea to talk about uh, uh, monopoly prices potentially causing a loss of consumer surplus, a loss of economic welfare. You can even find a deadweight loss area in the diagram to talk about there. And also talk about equity, talk about distribution. So perhaps monopoly pricing will lead to a disproportionately damaging effect on lower income families who have a much tighter budget and maybe a lower purchasing power. So that diagram there will be a good one to use if you want to talk about monopoly and loss of economic efficiency. What's the economic case against monopoly? Here's a good way that a teacher once told me to remember some of the issues regarding monopoly and economic efficiency. It's called SPEW. It's the acronym SPEW. So SPEW is about service. For example, does the lack of competition in the market affect negatively the quality of service to consumers? Uh, prices, obviously P. We've suggested in the previous page, previous slide, that prices under monopoly are going to be higher uh, than they would be under a competitive contestable market. Efficiency, so to what extent is a monopoly efficient, either in productive terms, costs, allocative, well we think not, and dynamic efficiency, which we're going to come to in a second, that's how monopoly profits are used in the market. And crucially, welfare. Come to a view, what's the overall welfare of a monopoly? Do you think that monopoly is good for the consumer overall, possibly because of economies of scale, or do you think monopoly is bad for consumer welfare because of higher prices? So SPEW is a good way of thinking about the effects of its monopoly. Here's an example, I think, of where monopoly pricing can have a damaging effect on social welfare. It's quite a, a well-known case now that a Neurofen in Australia was found guilty. Actually, it's just been fined quite heavily by an Australian court for breaching competition policy, for trying to sell what's essentially the same painkillers at very different prices. So they basically labelled on the packs exactly the same ingredient, by the way, that they were. This was this was great for migraine pain, or tension headache, or period pain, or sore back, and they were charging different prices 
for what was exactly the same product. And you could argue this is, I think that you could probably make a case for saying this is a rather unethical use of monopoly power in the market. And a good one to remember. Now, what about the benefits of monopoly? This is really going to help your evaluation skills. So what are some of the economic benefits? What I've done on the right hand side here is I've just used a simple unit cost curve. I'm assuming here the average costs are falling, that the three columns of scale. I've just put in a demand curve as well. So, for example, the monopoly could charge a high price P1, Q1, could do that. But if they have scale economies, if they have big unit cost reductions in the long run, OK, if the cost curve is falling here, then they could charge a lower price P2 here, sell, sell an extra output Q2. And I've shown the profit at price P2 if you get economies of scale. And therefore, there's an incentive for monopolies to achieve economies of scale to make higher profits and of course the consumer can benefit in terms of there being a lower price. So what are some of the benefits of monopoly? Well one is research and development. Monopolies tend to make more profit and therefore those profits can be used to fund perhaps research and innovation which could have important spillover benefits. In other words there could be some positive externalities from profits for example made by the big pharmaceutical companies fast forwarding new medicines and new relief uh, for, for patients and things. So we would say here that monopoly profits could lead to gains in dynamic efficiency. Second argument is that monopoly producers are probably better placed to achieve big economies of scale. And if the economies of scale are exploited and generated, that brings down the lower, brings down the average cost of production that might get passed on to the consumer in the form of a lower price. Third quite important point is that although a firm may enjoy domestic monopoly power at home, they may still face a lot of competition from overseas. So if you think about some of the big UK steel producers in the news at the moment, they basically are monopolies in their own country, but in a fiercely competitive international environment. And uh, indeed, many are struggling to make any money at all. So the key point here is it depends, it depends on how you define the market. You can have a domestic monopoly, which in theory is bad if you read the textbooks, but of course it may be in a very competitive global or European market. The fourth point is that monopolies can be regulated. So we often find in utilities, for example, that monopoly power is restricted by price capping or some form of price regulation, which can affect the overall level of monopoly profits. I think a key evaluation point I'd want you to take away from this is yes, monopolies tend to make high profits, for example, in pharmaceuticals and telecoms, but producer surplus has value too. It's not all just about consumer surplus. Here's a good example. These are Europe's leading telecoms firms in 2014. Uh, this is by revenue. This is not profit. It's just total revenue. Deutsche Telekom is huge. So is Vodafone, Telefonica, Orange and BT and so on. Some big household names, including Liberty Global. The point I'm making here is that uh, these are big firms and they need profits. They need to make significant profit in order to invest in networks, in capacity, in bandwidth. Which I think ultimately is what consumers want. They want competitive prices for their mobile phone services and for their handsets, but they also want mobile networks and telecoms networks which actually work and have speed and have reliability. And so therefore, in a sense, there's a trade-off. We need these firms to make significant profit. That comes from being a monopoly in the having monopoly power, but ultimately in the long term, consumers could gain as well in terms of productive efficiency, lower unit costs, and dynamic efficiency. More, in, more innovation and more research. So it's quite important here as part of your AS Micro to be able to evaluate monopoly power. And I'm hoping that uh, this little video may have, may have helped you to do that. Thanks for joining in.